Hi, guys. Um, thank you so much for coming to the talk. Welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Claudius, as Peter mentioned. And my talk is about, um, it's titled Engineers of People Too, but it's really about how to get the most from those around you. Um, but uh, first, a little background about myself and New. So New is a Seattle-based startup that connects Airbnb hosts or any vacation rental hosts, for a matter of fact, to local cleaners who can clean the place before guest check-in. We've been dubbed the Airbnb, or Uber for Airbnb cleaning. Um, so we're a very globalized uh, team with two-thirds of our engineers being based in uh, Nigeria. And so I'll give you the, we do a lot of agile development as well as have a lot of video conferencing calls. Uh, we do stand-ups daily through that. So to kind of set the stage, um, I'm going to give you guys a little uh, useful story that uh, I experienced in real life. So I was on a call with uh, my lead engineer about a recent PR of his, and uh, we were video, uh, sorry, we were screen, screen sharing, so I couldn't see his face. But as we were discussing his PR, I could tell he was, being, he was getting frustrated and irritated. And I was hearing inaudible grundles and, and grunts, and I was like, there's something there. Um, for every arbitrary question I asked around some type of code, he would come back even stronger for keeping it the way it was. And so I couldn't see his face, but this is what I imagined <laughs> it looked like behind the screen as he was again, as we were having this video call. And so I suspected that in this experience, I suspected that um, I got to start to get a sense that my engineer was a questioner type. And so I'm sure you're asking, what is a questioner type? Well, to kind of answer that, um, I need to introduce you, guys to introduce you guys to Gretchen Rubin, the lady on the left. Gretchen is a New York Times bestselling author and um, the author of The Four Tendencies. The Four Tendencies as Gretchen explains it, is a framework. Um, it helps us understand um, how each of us as individuals uh, react to expectations and why we act and why we don't act. And so where am I going with this? Well, you see, I had weeks prior to, the, to that interaction just finished reading the four tendencies, and so I began to see the different tendencies uh, in the interactions with my teammates. And again, as Gretchen explains it, the four tendencies is a framework that Let's just make better decisions, meet deadlines, suffer less, burn out, and engage more effectively. And the last part, engage more effectively, is what I want to focus on for this talk as it relates to work, work relationships. But um, truthfully, the four tendencies can be applied to any relationships. So as the name suggests, there are four tendencies, and we're going to go into each of them, and I'll explain a little bit more. Uh, let's start with upholders. Upholders readily meet internal and external expectations. Um, they are self-starters and self-motivated, but um, they are defensive and uh, are rigid and, and really enjoy structure. Next, you have questioners. Questioners meet expectations only if they believe it's justified. Um, these are the guys that are data-driven and strong-willed, um, but often suffer from uh, analysis paralysis, and uh, they're impatient because um, they don't see others as, as uh, moving they're impatient with others' complacency, essentially. They don't see others as, as moving as, as quickly as they want to. And they resist questioning, so that'll come back. Remember that. Obligers. Obligers meet inner, sorry, outer expectations, but struggle to meet inner expectations. Um, these are, uh, they're responsible, reliable, often make the best bosses, um, but they're exportable because they have a hard time saying no. Uh, again, they easy rise to the occasion to meet outer expectations, but struggle when it comes to internal motivations. And lastly, we have rebels. Rebels resist both outer and inner expectations. Um, these are independent-minded. Um, they have the creative ability to think outside the box, but they're resistant to routines and, um, again, struggle with repetitive tasks, etc. So these four mottos kind of best define the, the four, the, the four uh, tendencies, upholders, Discipline is my freedom. Questioners, I'll comply if you convince me why. Obligers, you can count on me, and I'm counting on you to count on me. And rebels, you can't make me, and neither can I. <laughs> so let's get back to our story. Now that you kind of understand what a questioner type is, um, in this interaction, um, again, I had to kind of, the next thing I had to do was get confirmation. I had, with nothing but a hunch so far, I wanted to, um, verify that my lead was, in, was indeed a questioner type because then I could then approach our interaction with a different uh, 
take a different approach in our action. So I offered that we pause our PR review for the next day, and my goal between now and then was to get confirmation on his tendency type. So what did I do? Well, I started as any good leader should. I took the test for myself. Um, you can go to that link anytime you want and take the test for yourself and kind of find out your tendency. Um, but when I took the test, it came back. I was an obliger. And uh, if you remember, obligers, as I mentioned back in the slide, make the best bosses. So obviously, I'm in the right position. <laughs> but so then the next thing to do was to get my team to take the test. So I pretty much just slyly slacked our, our group Slack and said, hey, guys, I just finished reading this great book that helps us, and I want, that helps us understand uh, ourselves individually, and I would love for everyone to, to um, partake in um, this exercise with me. And then I shared, my, I shared the link to the, to the quiz, and I shared my tendency type, and pretty much said, hey, once you've taken the quiz, could you post it on here so everyone else in the team can see as well. So I led by example. And so when the results came pouring in, um, lo and behold, my lead was, in fact, a questioner type. Um, I kind of chuckled to myself seeing that, that one come in, and I was like, okay, um, now I have a better frame of mind for how do we um, move forward in this interaction. So just to recap again, what is, what is a questioner type? Questioners question all expectations. Uh, they only um, act on, on one if they believe it's justified. Um, they put a high value on data, reasoning, um, and information. Um, again, they, a weakness of theirs can be analysis paralysis because they, they love data. They love having information at their fingertips, um, but too much can cause them to be slow moving. Um, they dislike being questioned, um, and not because they uh, want to be difficult, but because they put a, questioners intuitively put a large amount of um, thought and logic into their, into their actions, and so they believe when you're questioning them, you are more or less uh, um, questioning their, their actions, their logic, and so they kind of see that as a slight. And you may not mean it that way, but, and they don't, are, are not taking it as though you are trying to intentionally slight them, but just inter internally that's how they consider it. And so they can be um, a little bit, uh, uh, come off as a little bit uh, defiant if you're questioning them a lot, because they, be they begin to act on their tendency. So that's our story, um, but just kidding. Uh, I mentioned that at the beginning, I wanted to you guys to leave with some actionable insights as to how to um, take what you've learned from this talk and really apply it to your um, engineering uh, groups and the people you work with. So I'm going to talk to you guys next about how to effectively engage with the different tendency types. And once, hopefully, you've taken the test, figure out yours, you can then understand how um, others can best engage with you and um, get the most out of you as well, because it's a two-way street. So. Um, upholders. Upholders want to know what should be done. Uh, again, they are, um, they are able to meet both internal expert, ent external um, expectations, and they thrive on um, order and logic, more or less, and having a plan of action. So one thing to do, because they are very defensive, if, you, uh, um, if something doesn't go in order to plan, is don't suggest that they've dropped the ball. Again, upholders are, uh, they're pretty much workhorses, and they intuitively do their best. And so when you do that, they, they internally shut off from you. So just don't, don't suggest they drop the ball. It's, don't play the blame game with them, essentially. And then the next thing to do is follow through. If you suggest that uh, you're going to do something, uh, be sure to act on it. And if you don't, uh, they will then lose trust in you and faith in that you're going to be able to accomplish things later down the line. And this goes on with the next point. Upholders believe they're the best person to accomplish the task because they feel like they're the only ones they can trust. And so when they lose that trust in you, they will um, struggle to be able to feel like, struggle to be able to give you work or um, pass on tasks to you. And so the thing to do as an engineering leader is to help them delegate, um, help them realize that uh, the work doesn't just have to fall in their hands and that they can they have the power to be able to um, rope in other people and bring that. Um, next are questioners. Um, as again, I mentioned, my lead was the questioners. Questioners are simple. They just want justifications. Um, they want data brought to the argument. Um, so back up your answers or your questions, decisions with data. Um, don't judge. Don't judge their. Um, don't 
their decisions without data uh, because, again, it all comes back for them to a tangible piece of data that they can look to. And again, persistent questioning will make them seem defiant uh, or uncooperative, and uh, obviously none of us wants that. Um, obligers. Obligers secretly want accountability. Um, they, and, they, and this is myself, so uh, having to kind of cope with this was, was kind of groundbreaking for myself, but um, they require deadlines and other forms of accountabilities, uh, accountability like mentioned there, oversight, monitoring, et cetera. Um, they, they intuitively want that, and they may not express it externally, but um, if they think back to uh, just experiences in their lives, they realize that the times they've been able to accomplish um, the most important things for them have been when there's an external um, motivating factor. And so um, the next thing is to make sure you're not exploiting them. Again, obligers are kind of thought of as the yes men, and they will, if you ask them to do something, they, because it's coming from an external source, they will naturally want to go do it. And so they, that can be taken advantage of. People can then try to put on too much task, too much work on them. And so you also have to remind them of their power um, to say no. Um, that's a huge, uh, huge um, uh, way to get them to understand that they do have that, uh, the capability um, of being able to turn down work. And then lastly, rebels. Rebels want the freedom to do things their own way. Um, they will resist you if you ask them, and, and they actually sometimes, not sometimes, they do resist if they ask themselves to do something. So a useful trick is the Jedi mind trick, where you pretty much challenge them that, I bet you can't do this. And their rebel nature will, uh, will push them to prove you wrong, in a sense. Um, but you have to be careful not to overdo that. Anyone can catch on. Rebels are easy to catch on to that. And so if you overdo it, um, it will lose its power on said person, and you will no longer be able to get them to do anything, really. Um, but allow them to meet a challenge in their own way. Um, if you have a task for them, uh, don't tell them how to do it. Just give them the task, and they will figure it out how. And then lastly, don't force them into planning or routine. Uh, rebels are naturally adverse and um, hate being put into a routine or, or uh, yeah. So what are the key takeaways? I've got five for you. Be on the lookout for the obvious tendencies. Uh, again, this framework is really unique in that it's pre-clear cut. And again, the, the different names kind of define themselves, so it's easy for you to um, notice these things as you go across your, uh, across your day. Um, the next is take the test for yourself. It really is helpful for not only um, you as you're leveraging this, but for you to understand what tendency you are so that you can best um, not only uh, leverage that information to get the most out of yourself, but also share with others so that they can help get the most out of you. Next, share the results with your team. Um, it is imperative that not only you have this information, but your team have the knowledge and know-how to be able to, again, get the most out of those they're working with. Um, it's very important that this information not be um, um, hidden because I think people, if they find out that you know this and you've been using this with them, could feel some kind of way. So it's best to be open and share that, hey, um, we, again, the way I did it was I more or less just put it out there and said, here's my tendency type. I would love for everyone to um, take this short quiz and share with the team so that everyone is aware and it's a very transparent thing. And then be mindful of the different tendencies. Now that you kind of know them, um, again, not only keep on the lookout, but leverage this information to um, change your behaviors or change your tactics when it, is, when it comes to engaging with your other teammates. Like I mentioned, um, after, our, um, after I was able to get my leads tendency type, I knew that when we were re resuming our PR, I, was, I needed to bring data to our conversation. Um, the reason he was getting angry or frustrated was that I was posing arbitrary questions without bringing any data behind it. And so um, that sense of questioning, again, is not what is going to appeal to that person. So by me bringing data to, our argu to my arguments, I was better able to get the most out of him in uh, a positive interaction in that sense. And then lastly, um, empower everyone on the team to have this knowledge. Like I said, it's, not, it's much more valuable when the team is able to not only get the most out of themselves individually, but also out of the others in the team. Um, that's really key and um, again, it's, we're not working in a siloed environment. We work with teams, and so everybody here, um, if you can pass that knowledge on to your teammates and the, those who you work with, um, can really get the, the best environment to work in. So um, thank you. That is my talk. Um, you can find slides in, on that link and me on LinkedIn, and uh, we'll go into questions.